This is Britt Caswell with another example video. In today's video, I'm covering example two from lesson 8-5 in the Sophist Realize Algebra 1 textbook. The goal of today's video is to choose a function type for real world data. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to, to look at this set of data. We are going to try to figure out a function that would best model that data and then use it to help the owner of this framing store to track the cost of bubble wrap. All right, so this is how we make some approximations, which helps in business all the time. So here we go. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out if we need a linear model, a quadratic model, or an exponential model. All right, so that means that we need to find our first differences and second differences, and if necessary, our common ratio. So Savas has already done that for us. All right, our first differences, which is when I subtract my y values, came out like this, and these are not very constant, right? You could see they're going up about by 10 each time. So then we went ahead and we found our second differences, and they're reasonably close. So because those second differences are so similar, we're gonna go ahead and use a quadratic model. All right, so similar, use quadratic. All right, so this is going to be modeled with some kind of parabola, which honestly isn't terribly surprising. Since bubble wrap is two dimensional, it would probably be a um, quadratic thing for area, right? So what I've done is I've gone on to Desmos and I just put our table of values. And what I'm doing is I'm double checking to make sure that I typed properly. Because if you know me, I make typos all the time. Alrighty. So now to do regression in Desmos, remember I'm going to type the quadratic formula, except after every single y and x, I'm going to put the sub 1, and instead of an equal sign, I'm going to put a tilde. And so that takes me a second to type. In fact, that's my student's biggest complaint, is they hate typing the formula. All right, so this is the quadratic that should theoretically model our data. So notice on this that it's giving me my parameters, A, B, and C here. These aren't quite lining up to what uh, Desmos is telling me. Okay, Desmos, oh no, it is telling me. Sorry, I meant um, Savas. <laughs> Savas is giving us a little table um, as well that has these numbers I just can't read. So there that is. Now what's interesting is the R squared statistic that um, Savas is pulling up is 0.999, like there's five nines, one, seven, six, oh, seven. Whereas this R squared statistic rounded it to one. And so I believe that Savas's R squared statistic is a little bit better than our Desmos R squared statistic because we know this isn't a perfectly um, a perfectly quadratic thing because these differences aren't all the exact same. They're not all 0.11. And so whatever calculator Savas used, which I'm going to snip it for you guys as well. But whatever calculator that Savas used is a little bit better for their R squared statistic because they didn't round it. Whereas Desmos rounded. So you see that kind of difference here and here. But the overall values for A, B, and C are the same, so we're just going to keep going with it. We're good. So the function that I'm going to represent with would be f of x equals a. And our a value is this kind of hideous one. Now when Savas went to write this one down, they rounded this to 0 0.0015. I'm not gonna, because I have all the numbers, so why would I? That's the thing, is if you round in the middle of a problem, you're gonna, you're gonna mess yourself up pretty bad. So this is the function that'll model it, and it's kind of hideous, but there it is. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to type that function out here on Desmos. I'm not typing any regression parts of the formula. It's just writing out the actual function. That way I can have the, um, 
parabola sitting here on the page. All right, so we can get rid of our table. Oops, we can get rid of our table of values. We can get rid of our regression. Here's our function. And so we are trying to estimate the cost of a 75 inch picture. So all that I'm doing is I'm finding f of 75 or plugging 75 into the function. Now, if you know me, you know that I'm lazy. So what I'm doing is I'm just going on to Desmos and instead of putting 75 in and doing all these sub calculations, I'm graphing the line x equals 75. And what that does is that is giving me um, the points of intersection here. And so that y value ends up being the cost for one painting. And of course I decided to make everything so big for this video. So I'm just going to shrink some stuff down so I have room. There we go. That looks a little better. And so you could see from, from my Desmos graph that the cost of one picture would be about $8.94 for the 75 inch picture. Um, now that's different than what Savis got. All right. So I'm going to take a screenshot of Savis and show you what Savis is saying. They did the same thing, but they're using a different calculator. And they also rounded their equation, right? Remember how I was saying for A, they used 0 0.0015. And so when they rounded to make their equation, that rounding is changing their answer. So do you see how their estimate, what they got was $9.01 and I had $8.94? So that rounding mid problem is changing the actual answer. So you want to make sure that, you know, you round in the same places that Savas rounds in. And you may not, and that's okay. So now for the try it, they want us to pick which model would be best to, um, would be best to use. And then we have these tables here, which came from doing regressions on Desmos, and we're picking which one's the best table, okay? So let's start by finding our D1, which is our, our first difference. All right, so remember, when I'm finding my first difference, I'm taking a, the Y value and dividing it by, uh, or I'm sorry, subtracting it with the Y value before it. So 89.5 minus 100, that gives me negative 10.5. 78.9 minus 89.5 is negative 10.6. 68.4 minus 78.9 is negative 10.5. Uh, so these are all very close, aren't they? And 57.8 minus 68.4 is negative 10.6. So these are all really close with the difference 1. So I'd imagine it's probably going to be a linear function. Um, but you always want to check and make sure that uh, you're not wrong. Sorry if you hear any bells in the background. My cat is quite excited. He just got a new toy. Alright, so now we're doing... Clear out my calculator. So now I'm doing the difference too. So I'm taking things and subtracting them. So negative 10.6 minus uh, 10 negative 10.5 is the same thing as adding 10.5. So that's a difference of negative 0.1. Negative 10.5 minus negative 10.6 is a difference of positive 1, or 0.1. And then I'm doing that subtraction again where it goes back to negative 0.1. So 
this one was relatively the same. Now these ones have a difference of 0.2, whereas this one only had a difference of 0.1. All right, so the linear is currently more um, accurate than the quadratic. And so now I'm going to do my ratios. So remember, with your ratios, you take the number and divide by the number before it. So 89.5 divided by 100 is, oh, I should change color, is a 0.895. 78.9 divided by 89.5 is 0.88156, and that goes on, I'm just lazy. Uh, 68.4 divided by 78.9 is 0.86692. Oh, there's motion at my front door. And uh, 57.8 divided by 68.4 is 0.845. Alrighty, so the, com the, the ratio here is not constant. So I would probably not stick with exponential. I would probably go with the, the linear model. Okay. So if I choose the linear model, you can see here that the um, the R squared statistic is one, so that's how you know this one fits really well. The one that fits least well, according to the R squared statistic, is our exponential model. See how it is further away from one. Um, our quadratic is also really close because remember how I said these were pretty dang close to each other. Um, but this one had a bigger con like difference between the two, right? This one had a difference of 0.2, whereas these had a difference of 0.1 from each other. And so that's why the linear is a little bit better. So there we have it, guys. That is how to choose a function type for real-world data. Until next time.